welcome to our worship today, coming to you from Christchurch in Welling Garden City, a community still scattered to our homes and worshipping online. My name's Andrew, I'm the lead pastor of Christchurch and a warm welcome to you. If you've recently moved into the area, or indeed if you live further afield and you've started to uh, worship with us online we'd love to connect with you uh, and so please email us on info at christchurchwgc.org.uk and we'll get back to you we'd love to hear from you psalm 46 starts like this it says god is our refuge and strength and ever present help in time of trouble as we come into his presence now we come with thanks that he's all these things to us, our refuge, our strength, and he's present with us now. I'm going to hand over to my colleague Simon uh, for the next part of our service. Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us uh, for this service. Uh, now as a church we're joining with other churches around the world in a prayer initiative started by the Archbishop of Canterbury called Thy Kingdom Come. And uh, one of the simple things that they're encouraging each one of us to do is to pick the names of five people that you want to pray for for the next few days. And uh, we'll tell you more at the end of, of the service of different ways that we can pray during this time. Uh, but it's exciting that we can join together with other churches. It's exciting that we can speak to God, uh, that he hears our prayers and he answers us. Now we're going to worship God together and uh, it's Action Sunday so thank you for all those who sent in their actions. Uh, feel free to join in as we worship. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. to worship our great big God who holds us securely in his hands and thanks to everybody for sending in the videos and helping lead us in that now. Now during the um, Sundays we've been looking at Psalm 23 we've talked about the the exercise the practice of giving God 
thanks for specific things, pausing to stop and think of what those things are, uh, exercising our thanksgiving muscle, if you like. And this week we've asked Eric and Helen to share six things that they're grateful for. In this lockdown situation, we are particularly grateful to God. We're not isolated because we have each other for company and we haven't got too many responsibilities like homeschooling. We continue to enjoy very good health and fitness. We've got plenty of space, house and garden to enjoy and also to work in. And easy access to woods and fields where we can walk with very few others. And the weather has been lovely. And we're grateful for the technology which allows us to connect, sort of, with family and church. God is very good. Can you believe it? It's the second to last week in our series on Psalm 23. We've been going through it stage by stage, verse by verse. And next week we'll be challenging you to learn the whole thing off by heart. Um, but let's hear it again as it's read to us by Athena. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake, even though I walk. Through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Few are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the next part of the psalm says this. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And uh, here I am. I'm, I'm sat at a table. I know you can't, I can't see it, but... I actually am sat at a table. And uh, what's a table for? Well, we eat at tables. We spend uh, time with others at tables. Um, but it sounds like David's imagining a table that's been prepared for him, like a, like a feast. Imagine a table uh, full of choice food and drink, places set for the guests uh, who will eat all these things. Um, what, does that, what does that bring up to your mind? Well, it's a picture of joy of friendship, but it's also a, one of protection and redemption. He says that this feast happens in the presence of his enemies. Those who were previously against him are now watching him prosper. Let's pause there for a moment as we think about the Psalms in general. There's um, a scholar called Walter Brueggemann who says that there's three types of Psalms. First of all, there's the Psalms of orientation marked by a happy face. Um, when everything's amazing, everything's going so well for the psalmist. Uh, it's, it's a kind of psalm summarised by the song, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And we, we have those feelings, don't we? Those moments in life where just everything's going well and we want to praise God for them. They're, they're psalms of orientation. But then there's also psalms of disorientation. The kind of psalms where, for the person writing them, everything's falling apart. Life is a mess. And where on earth is God, for goodness sake? Um, this could be summarised by a sad face. And then finally, there are the psalms of reorientation. Things were messed up for the psalmist, but now God has redeemed the situation. He's sorted it out. I once was lost, but now I'm found. It was bad, but I'm in a good place now. And the different types of psalms remind us that we can bring all our emotion, all our frustrations and joy to God. He can cope with whatever we throw at him. So here's a question. Which one do you think Psalm 23 is? I reckon it's, it's a psalm of reorientation. He's previously been surrounded by these enemies and threats, but now he's more aware that he's surrounded by God and his powerful love in this situation. God is his good shepherd and he's redeeming the situation. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What does that make you think of in terms of your own life? First of all, you might think of your experience. Maybe you can think of enemies that have come your way in the past 
uh, battles that you've won, injustice that was made right, and people that might have hurt you, but you've worked your way through it, through the pain, you've overcome. Maybe you think of ways in which things have turned out for, go for good that you never expected would. And, and you might want to thank God right now for ways in which he's, he's brought you through all of that. He's prepared a table before you. The second thing I think of is, is, is this bit about in the presence of my enemies. You know, it makes me think about the cross. Uh, for Jesus, his moment of glory was at the cross, which seems bizarre because it was so awful. But for Jesus, this was the moment of triumph when the power of sin and death and evil were being conquered through his death. And all of this happens in the presence of his enemies. He's surrounded by those who have crucified him. And it's a reminder to me that God can do his best work, uh, even when it feels like we're in the midst of a battle. It's in the suffering, it's in the struggle that God is with us, healing, restoring, redeeming, just as he did with Jesus, as we wait quietly for a resurrection. And then finally, this psalm makes me think about the future as well. Uh, we live in these kind of in-between times where there's still injustice. Not everything does go our way. Not everything is fair. Not, not everything does work out in the way that we want. Uh, but this verse speaks about a time when God will make everything new. A day when the suffering of Good Friday is redeemed by the resurrection of Easter Sunday. A, a day when, like Jesus, we sit around a table with friends after his resurrection, contemplating how every enemy has been conquered. This psalm looks forward to a day when all the promises of God are fulfilled, which is good news, isn't it? The future is bright, there is hope. As we bring our thoughts to God right now, we're gonna worship him before we look at the next part of the psalm. And we're gonna use a song called Surrounded. And as we sing this together, um, let's thank God that even on days when it looks like we're surrounded, it's in those moments that we're also surrounded by God. So 
Next, David says to God, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. There's a sense here of relaxing into this feast at the table, despite the fact that his enemies are present. Such is the celebration of what God is doing, that uh, the fears he has and the cares and the worries he, about his enemies are put to one side. You anoint my head with oil. <clears throat> In the Middle East, um, Olives are in plentiful supply and so olive oil, you find it everywhere used and has been over the, the centuries. Um, I've got some here that I might use when I'm praying for somebody and anointing them for healing in Jesus' name. Um, olive oil was used in the ancient world to maybe as an ointment to soothe or heal um, in cooking uh, and in worship, uh, the setting aside and setting apart of that which is sacred. And here, what we have is the image of a head anointed with oil. Uh, and this is a picture of refreshment and joy that the Hebrew word translated and anointed here uh, speaks about being reinvigorated and strengthened by oil on the head, refreshed. And the, this image of being reinvigorated and Strengthened with oil is often linked with joy, uh, just as we find in other scriptures in the Old Testament where it talks about the oil of joy, the oil of gladness. And uh, so you anoint my head with oil speaks about the incredible well-being and joy that God places upon us and around us. Uh, and thinking about my cup overflows, um, have you ever wondered when you go to somebody's house how long you're supposed to stay and when you're supposed to leave and how you judge that? Or maybe you've been hosting someone and found it difficult to let them know uh, it's time to go now. Um, so th there's a custom in the ancient Middle East that everyone knew, everybody recognised, and it was to do with the filling of the cup. The people of that culture they, they were welcoming to a stranger, people in that part of the world still very much are today. Uh, and whoever turned up on your doorstep or outside your uh, tent flap, as it were, the first thing that you did was that you offered them a glass of water or of wine. And then as you chat with the, the guest, um, you, you drink the cup, they drink the cup, and then the host fills it. And, and then as guest, you drink the cup and your host refills it. As long as the cup keeps refilling or being refilled, then you know that you're welcome to stay. But if after a, a few refills, they left the cup empty, it meant it's time to leave. Everybody knew the custom. So where does this overflowing cup come into this? 
if the host decided he really liked a person and wanted them to stick around for a long time, then they would take the cup and they, they would fill it. And they would fill it not only to the rim, but uh, they would let it overflow. They would keep going, whoops, until it, it overflowed. Now, think about it. Um, you don't waste water when you're in a really dry, hot land, like a desert area. And the overflowing cup then becomes a symbol. Uh, it's, it's like you really like the person, you want them to stay. Um, it's a symbol of full acceptance. Uh, there's a special place for you. And so as David sings, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. He's recognizing how wonderful it is to be fully accepted and at home with God. And it, it kind of speaks of well-being and a joy found in God that's over him and overflowing through him. The New Testament speaks about um, those who know and follow Jesus as overflowing, overflowing with hope in Romans chapter 13, overflowing with love towards others in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, overflowing with joy in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and then generosity that comes out of that. And, and Jesus was recorded standing up on a feast day and inviting the thirsty to come to him. Let me read from John chapter 7. Jesus said, let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. That's from verse 37 through to 39. Rivers of living water flowing from within, overflowing rivers of joy, of hope, of love towards others. You may, you may feel surrounded by trials and troubles that your cup, it seems like it's only half full, maybe not even that right now. God would love you to have that sense that David sings about here in this psalm, that sense of joining at the table, knowing you're fully accepted, reinvigorated, strengthened. God wants you to, he, he wants to fill you afresh so that you can say, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. So we're going to sing a, a song of worship now. And as Joel and Fiona lead us in this next works, worship song, let me encourage you to come to Jesus as you are. Come and drink afresh. Let the Holy Spirit fill you, fill you up with hope, fresh love for others and with joy in the midst of adversity. Make this your prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, <laughs> as I draw near to you to drink. Come into my life. Fill me. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh, I pray. We 
We sing Holy Spirit, come, come Lord Jesus. We sing come Lord Jesus, come. We sing come Lord Jesus, Yes, Lord, we do ask that you come in fresh ways and fill us to overflowing again. You know, when God lavishly provides for us and when there's this overflow of all that he does in our lives, uh, it's never just for ourselves. God wants his blessing to be an overflow into the lives of others. And we can do that as we pray for one another and we pray for this community. But first, we'll hear from Glenis, who is our frontline focus for this week. Well, the challenges of living alone during this lockdown. Obviously, it's quite lonely for quite a lot of the time. And the thing that I really miss is the fact that I don't see my friends face to face. I know we have Zoom and we have Skype. And they're great, but it's not the same. I also not miss, I miss not being around children. I've been around children all my life, whether at school or at church, and I really miss that. I also find it hard to motivate myself to do all the jobs that are needing to be done around my house, and there are many of them. The feeling that I'm not being very useful, either to myself or to anybody else. But there are joys too, of course. One of the biggest joys is being able to walk around this town and its surrounding areas, through fields, through woods, seeing flowers, hearing birds. It's just wonderful. And I'm very thankful for the health that allows me to do that and to walk for miles and miles. And another thing that's a joy, although it's a challenge too, is learning new tech. Uh, especially at the moment, trying to learn how to put the song words onto the songs for Sunday services. Normally that's quite easy without the lockdown, but it's quite a challenge with the lockdown. But we're getting there, and it's, it's real fun trying to do it. Please pray that in all of this, I realise more that I'm not alone because God is always with me. I find that hard to remember sometimes. And also that I may be able to motivate myself to do the things that need doing and not just to waste time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Glenis, for uh, sharing with us. Shall we just pause and pray for her? Father, we do indeed pray for Glenys and for others like her. And uh, we pray for a sense of your presence. Open her eyes to see the purposes you have for her in these days. Encourage her, we pray. Sustain her. With your hope, sustain her. And may she be a blessing to many in these challenging times. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to pause for others in our community uh, in just a moment. Um, in our church diary, we had planned um, prior to this uh, lockdown um, a prayer walk in the area of one of our church buildings. And prayer walking is a great way to get active in prayer. And it's as simple as it sounds. You, you pray and you walk keeping your eyes open as you go. And uh, it's something that you could try where you live, but uh, especially think about doing that during this week um, when we've got Thy Kingdom Come uh, taking place. Uh, you can do it and it helps you see a familiar place through different eyes as you uh, listen out to God and what he's saying and capture his heartbeat for an area and you learn a little bit more about God's heart for the community where 
you live. Now, you, you can pray in silence as you walk, pausing to look and listen at particular points, or you simply pray quietly where that's appropriate. But the point of prayer walking isn't about being seen praying, it's about seeing and praying. Catherine, who's our leadership team member for our Parkway site, and Dave, who's our leadership team member for our Pear Tree site, have, have been out and about along with me, and we've pulled together what we've called a virtual prayer walk, pausing to pray about the different things we see in the, in the area near the two Christchurch sites. So as we watch this, let's use this as our prayers to God for the area where we live. Let's pray. And as we pass homes, flats and hostels, we think of those who live by themselves. We pray that the Lord gives them good contacts in this time. And we also think of those who are self-isolating at the moment due to ill health. And we pray that the Lord will keep them going. We pray for those who live by themselves. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we pass schools, preschools and nurseries, we pray for all those involved in education at this time. We ask you to sustain and refresh all teachers and other academic staff who have kept going for children of key workers. And as schools prepare to open to more pupils soon, we pray for wisdom and peace as staff prepare healthy and safe ways for children to return. Father, we pray for all in education. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as we pass new housing developments, we pray for all who are moving into our neighbourhood in the midst of the chaos and disruption of the lockdown. May they know your peace. May they be surprised how quickly they settle and may the local community and especially your church, your people, extend a warm welcome in your name. And may many find a home with your people in your church, we pray. Father, we pray for all moving into our neighbourhood in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we pass office buildings and industrial units, we pray for businesses and those struggling to survive during the pandemic. We also pray for the workers and we pray that they would find safe ways to get back to work. And finally, we pray for those who are still working so hard to provide what this community and the people within it needs. We pray for local businesses. In Jesus' name, Amen. We walk past GP surgeries, pharmacies or hospitals. We pause to pray for those who are working on the front lines of health and care, seeing patients, serving medication, caring in homes. Grant them good supplies of protective equipment and strengthen and heal those we know who are ill. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pass uh, many church buildings, particularly in this central part of Welling Garden City. And as we do, we pause to pray. Father, we remember the people who make up the church. And we pray for the witness of Christians throughout our neighbourhood as they serve and bless their neighbours that together we may shine the light of Christ effectively. Father, we pray for your church in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. As Andrew said, you can prayer walk wherever you live. Um, there's a document to download with ideas for prayer walking on the website you'll see at the bottom of the screen. And we'll also send it out by email so you can look out and get praying. And over the summer, we'd love to surround the whole town in prayer. Uh, you might know that uh, there's been a route created that's 20.20 kilometres long because it's 20 20 and it's a special centenary route that goes all the way around the town and uh, if you walk any of that and you prayer walk it then let us know so that we can together somehow cover the different areas of Welling Garden City that'd be an achievement wouldn't it wouldn't that be wonderful we've got a couple of things coming up today straight after this uh, service the uh, the children are going to be meeting up with their families and with some of the children's workers uh, for a little zoom meeting which is very exciting and uh, then tonight at seven o'clock, there's an opportunity to link into a, an online Zoom um, prayer meeting. And so um, if you'd like uh, details as to how to access that, then uh, if you'd like to email this email address below and we'll get the details to you. But seven o'clock, we're gonna light a candle together and we're gonna pray. 
thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, do get in contact to let us know how you're doing. Uh, if there's specific things you can be praying for, then you can email uh, this address uh, here so that we can be praying for you. And, and may you this week know the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, who fills your cup to overflowing, who anoints you, who prepares good things for us. And may you also this week be aware of ways that you can pour into the cup of others, being Christ in all you say and do. Amen.